Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and welcome back to another review, and that is of Revenge of the Ninja of 1983. <clears throat> I can definitely say, I really enjoy this film. I've seen this film before, but my friend Mike OCP sent me a copy, which was nice of him. It was great to see this again. I definitely say I like this more than Pray for Death, which came out after. Didn't see Rage of Honor. Honestly, didn't see Enter the Ninja. Ninja 3, Domination, I didn't care for. I mean, the opening is interesting on the golf course massacre, but I like. I think this film is the best handled of those films. I mean, I like American Ninja 1 and 2 more. I grew up with those films, but Revenge of the Ninja of those Shota Suji is the best Shota Suji movie I've seen. Especially better than shit like Black Widow, but of the Shota Suji films I've seen, to me, this is the best. <laughs> This is one that I don't get why Shao Factory did Ninja 3 Domination, but not this one. This is, without a doubt, the better movie. I don't know if they couldn't get the rights to it or something, but this film is miles better than Ninja 3. And miles better than Pray for Death, in my opinion. But this film is miles better than Ninja 3, but that got a commentary track and shit by Shao Factory, and this gets nothing? That's bullshit. But anyway, this is the... Uh, this is a film that I reviewed a long time ago. I don't think that review's still up. But this is a film that I remember when I revisited... God, was it a year or two ago? Or maybe a few years ago. I'm like, this film seems familiar. And then I had realized at that time that I had seen this film when I was a kid. Because when I was a kid, there was like clip that I remembered. But I could never remember what the movie was until I saw this movie. And that was the opening scene of this movie where this family gets massacred. And I remember this, like, sort of hut, these ninjas coming out, and this family getting massacred. And I remember, like, a kid getting a uh, star to the eye or to the head. And I'm like, you know, women get... I'm like... But like, it's one of those things in the back of your head from childhood that you remember. But it's like, I don't know what movie that was. And then, again, when I had seen this film again, I'm like, this is that movie. This is that movie. And I guess there was stuff cut out when it came out on VHS. The original theatrical release was heavily cut, as was the VHS. Shoto Suji's son's death, Ninja Star on the Head, was cut, as were the deaths of three guards at the hands of the evil ninja Brayden. Brayden's gory death was also slightly trimmed. All cuts were reinserted into the Region 1 DVD from MGM, which I have, which is nice. And... I thought this movie was ballsy. I mean, this movie is definitely a violent film. Uh, before any of that, I gotta mention the score. This score is excellent. I love the score to this film. I think the score is fantastic. Uh, I'll go on a limb and say this is the... I don't know, I really like the score to American Ninja 2, so I can't say that. American Ninja 2 and this score are the best scores to ninja films. I like the story of the Ninja Turtle films, but I would say the story to this and American Ninja 2 are more badass. But this is music by three people. W. Michael Lewis, Lauren Rinder, Rinder, and Rob Walsh. So I don't know who did the music. It says three people. But whoever it was, if you go on YouTube, it says Rob Walsh himself. But I love it. Especially one called Ninja like Raiders or something. Ninja Raiders or something like that. I think like Ninja Raiders. Because that's some music that you hear in a lot of trailers. Like, if I did a Ninja Turtle movie, that's the store I would use, to be honest. I'd steal this and use it for that. Because that's a badass store. Really enjoy the store. I have to think that video game Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden, this is Gaiden. Ninja Gaiden had to have seen this movie. It had to have. That video game Ninja Gaiden had to have seen this movie. It had to have. But, uh, I, I thought this movie was badass. I really do. Yeah, you have a couple of silly moments, but I thought Sam Furstenberg, he did a really good job. And, and Sam Furstenberg, this is a guy that. He's done a lot of good stuff. I mean, he did this film. He did Ninja 3. 
Breaking 2, Ledger Boodaloo. Major Ninja, which I like. Avenger Force, which I liked. Oh yeah, Scorpion releasing. Apparently we'll be releasing a special edition of that in the fall or winter with Michael Dudikoff and the director doing a commentary and stuff. That's one I would love to pick up. Major Ninja 2 I really enjoy. He did Riverbend, Delta Force 3, Cyborg Cop 1 and 2. I mean, this other stuff, eh. Quit saying with Michael Dudikoff. It's like one of the last films he did. The film pretty much sucked. It's like a shitty version of General's Daughter. But uh, I do really like American Ninja 1 and 2. I like Avenging Force, and I really like this one. This is one of his best ones right here. This American Ninja, American Ninja 2, and Avenging Force, those are his good ones, or his best ones, I should say. But, uh, yeah, it starts out with this ninja's just killing his family, wiping them out, and pretty bloody, like, killing women, and, like, getting, like, a ninja star into a kid's face. I'm like, holy shit, man. <laughs> holy fuck. And then Shokasuti comes in and tits ass, kills all their ass. I will say, though, it's kind of weird that when he kills the ninjas, it's less bloody than when the family got killed. I thought it was kind of weird, like, it should be, like, much bloodier when he killed these ninjas. Because his family got massacred, it was pretty bloody, but, you know. Oh, well. That's that's just a nitpick, but Shoji Sudi foots these guys up. And his friend mentions, oh, you should come to America with me. You can help me with this business, dealing with, uh, like, like urns and, and uh, dolls. Dolls, not urns, dolls. It's with dolls. And all that's left is him, his mother, and his baby, who's his youngest son. And they move to America. And he swears, Shokasuti says he's never going to be a ninja again. He wants a good life for his family. Then it's years later. Now his son has grown up and is actually played by his real life son, uh, King Kasuti. Now, Kane Kazuti was actually the bad guy in Ninja 2, Shadow of a Tear, with Scott Atkins, which I really enjoy that film. I really enjoy that film. And that's cool. Show Kazuti got his actual kid to play his kid. And his kid knows martial arts, and he does a pretty decent job with it. <laughs> Protects himself, you know, fights some bullies off. And I thought Show Kazuti did fine for what he had to do, and and... You, you find out, of course, that his buddy, Brayden, is in the heroin business, and using these dolls to carry these heroin drugs. And he's trying to deal with this other mafia boss, but then they get into a turf war. And Brayden, this guy, apparently is a ninja himself. Now, I don't buy the actor Arthur Roberts as a villain, but I think they made a right decision here, unlike. Pray for Death, which I mentioned in that review, where he, he's wearing a mask, so once he wears the mask, they can put anyone in there. And, you know, this is a person who can fight, who can do flips, who can do this and that. I know that's really stupid of me saying, because, what about the Shredder in the new movie? Yeah, I know, but he's not looking like Megatron. <laughs> that's one thing. You know, not looking like Megatron? That'd be a step in the right direction, you know? Just my little thing there, but this is a ninja movie. This is a natural ninja movie. I don't like that bullshit. This is a natural ninja movie. Ninjas doing ninja shit. Go figure. Someone with ninja in the title, like Revenge of Ninja, and they're doing ninja shit. Oh, shit. But, I mean, it gets to a point where you have some silly stuff. I mean, you have, like, the Shokasuti's mom trying to stop Brayden. And, of course, you don't buy this old woman doing this stuff. But the guy kills the old woman. Stabs right through this door. And she's stuck to the wall. Is you know, graphic. Uh, tries to kill the kid. King Kasuti. And then this woman who maybe has a thing with Shokasuti. Or has a little crush on him. Another silly thing. She gets hypnotized. So she gets the kid. He has some, you know, little silly moments, but I, I'll forgive it for that. Some really fun action scenes, like these guys taking these dolls and Shoto Zuti kiss these guys' ass, including this Native American guy who's got like a hatchet, kicks his ass. 
uh, chases him down a vehicle, does this thing, which I remember seeing, of course, later, because it came out late. Well, I saw this first, but Remember that scene in the transporter with Jason Statham where he gets on top of the vehicle and goes feet first into the windshield? Well, Shokasudi did it before Jason Statham. He gets there, goes feet first right into the windshield, kicks these guys' ass. I also like this detail where like he's trying to get these other guys after fuck up these other guys. And like well, he's being dragged and he rolls, and I like the idea that his feet and legs are fucked up. Because he was literally dragged. So yeah, his legs are cut up. His face is cut off from being dragged. Because a lot of times in movies, how many times have you seen movies where people get dragged and they have nothing on them? But this guy's like bloodied up. His knees are fucked up to hell. I like the idea. I like that little detail because a lot of movies don't do that. And it makes you believe in the situation more. and makes you go, okay, yeah, you know, this guy, you know, is hurt. And he's human. And then, you know, this braiding guy wearing the demon mask. He's going against this mafia guy and fucking up people. I mean, he's cutting hands off. He has these things that makes the guy trip so these things stick into his head. And, you know, fucking up people left and right like a ninja would and should. In R-rated fashion. It was nice to see. Like it says, it cuts some stuff down where, you know, deaths of some of the guards... I'm like, it's definitely an R-rated film. And Shota Sudi goes after him, and you have a badass ninja battle. You have a badass ninja fight. And there's other little fights in there, like, this guy tries to help Shota Sudi, and they try to talk to this gay, and this gay wants to start a fight, and it takes place around this playground. And they use the playground. It's a big fucking playground. They're like, this is a playground for adults, not just for kids. Adults can play on this playground. But you have some fun action bits as well in there. And that's what I mean. It's, it's a very short film, too. It's only 80-some minutes long. It went by very quickly. It went by very quickly. This is 90 minutes, but I swear it was only 80-some minutes. You have an excellent soundtrack, excellent score, fast pace. Uh, Shota Sudi does a great job. Some a lot of you know pretty well corridor fights, in my opinion. Fun fights. It's definitely R-rated. I mean, hell, the opening's like, ooh, shit. It's kind of ballsy. If I did a ninja star in a kid's face. Ballsy in my opinion. <laughs> and uh badass ninja fight at the end where Shokasudi goes after the you know the evil ninja. And this evil ninja is like, using every trick in the book. I mean he's even at a point where he's got like little flamethrower to shoot at Shokazudi. Uh yeah, sword fights. Even the bad guy uses like these fake mannequins of himself to trick him. Like Shokasudi thinks he has them. But then it's a it's a fake mannequin that he cuts through. And granted, I don't know how the hell he did it, but you know it's, that's the art of the ninja, you know, ninja magic. But uh, I'm like, okay, or he had this set up beforehand. I don't know, but okay, it was, it was fun to watch. It's pretty lengthy too, and it didn't get boring for me. And when he stabs the guy. And he pulls it out, big spurt of blood, pretty much kind of like what you see later in Kill Bill films, when someone, you know, the big over-the-top spurting of blood, same type you see here, which that's fun to watch. And, you know, fucks the guy up, and gets with his son and the girl, and yeah, that great music, doo, 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 doo. and like all this took place on a rooftop, and I don't want to give her, I mean... You just see for yourself, Revenge of the Ninja. It's a very fun ninja movie. Like, this to me is the best of the Shota Sudi movies. I haven't seen every single one. Like, Nine Deaths of the Ninja, I've heard bad things. I haven't seen Rage of Honor. Um, I haven't even posted Pray for Death, so I don't know what people feel about my opinion on that. But I do feel that this film is miles better than... The next film was Pray for Death. I thought it was a big step down from this film. That's the thing. Like, I really enjoy this film. And to me, Pray for Death was just a big step down from this one. Like, this one was fast-paced. It was entertaining. I think it had a lot more brutality. Like, even in the uncut stuff I saw for Pray for Death, they didn't come close to this stuff. And the action was more entertaining. The ending was more satisfying. Uh, more fun battle and ninja battle and 
I bought the fight more. And even with even you have some silly stuff, but okay, I'll let that go. You know, the hypnosis thing and the the bad guy hypnotizing the girl and the old woman, you know, fighting this guy. But uh like her getting killed, like sword right through her, like you see the reveal and the blood, I'm like, wow, you know, it's it is graphic and when I say graphic, I'm not saying like heads are getting split open and stuff, but it's graphic enough. It's definitely R rated. And I, it's an entertaining movie. I think it's a fun ninja movie. I think it's one of the best ninja movies ever made. I'll stand by that. It's, it's the, I think it's the best show Crusudi film, and it's one of the best ninja films ever made. It's a lot of fun, and it has an awesome score. I think the score kicks a lot of ass. Do no, 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 no. And. I don't know what more I can say. Sam First and Purred. I think this is one of the first films he did. Because he did a film called One More Chance, which I don't know what the hell that is. Some film with John LaMotta and Kirstie Alley. That's Tom returns home to find that his family left and he has no idea where they went. Only a neighbor knows where they moved but does not want to give him the information until he can show that he has changed. So definitely, you know, more of a drama or something. But this was his first action movie, and he handled it very well. Very well. And this film, for his low budget, made $13 million, so it did very well. I think this really helped show Krasuti's career. It definitely helped Sam Furstenberg's career, because he got Ninja 3, then he got Breaking 2, he got American Ninja, and that definitely helped his career. As well as Michael Dudikoff. And I love American Ninja 2, but uh, yeah, really, Sam Furstenberg, I think he knew how to handle action better than the director of Pray for Death. I haven't seen Enter the Ninja, but I've heard less than stellar things of that, especially about Franco Nero, whatever the fuck the guy's name is. But uh, I, you know, I already know I'm going to like this more than that one. I just know it. How do you know? Because I know, I just said. But Revenge of the Ninja kicks a lot of ass. I'll say that. I don't know what more I can say. Revenge of the Ninja is a badass movie. It's a badass ninja movie. And if you haven't seen Revenge of the Ninja, I highly recommend it. Go find it and watch. So either way, thanks for watching. Take care. It needs Shell Factory. If you don't do Ninja 3, why the fuck don't you do this movie? <laughs> That's why I don't get Shell Factory. You don't do Ninja 3, and this movie's miles better, and you don't do this movie. But hey, what do I know? Or, or do American Ninja 1 and 2. Those are better than Ninja 3, but again, what do I know? There's a lot of movies that need to be done, but hey. Either way, thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.